Dear friends, we continue our working session of the Fifth International Theosophical Congress in Sochi. A line place in offline, and we have not only representatives of Sochi, but also participants of the Congress from different parts of Russia. Dear friends, we welcome Chernozemova Yelena Nikolaevna, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Moscow Pedagogical State University, Moscow. Chernozemova Yelena Nikolaevna was born in the city of Astrakhan in 1979. She uh, finished faculty of Russian language and literature of Krasnoyarsk State Pedagogical Institute, having received the qualification of teacher of Russian and literature. In 1989, she defended her PhD thesis, uh, John Lilly's Dram Dramaturgy, The Problem of Genre. The topic of the doctoral dissertation, the system of genres in English drama in the 80s and 90s of the uh, 70, pardon, 60th century. Uh, since 1993, she has been associated with the Moscow Pedagogical State University, where she completed her thesis and works as a professor. A number of publications, she reflects development of overknowledge by works of work world artistic culture. She is author of books revealing the unity of the fundamental principles of Christianity and internal yoga, cosmic worldview, new thinking of the 21st century, substantiation of the priority of culture in the life of society and production of its guardians, priority of culture in the life of society and many others. She is awarded with a medal with co contribution to the development of education in Russia. Um, a loss of price um, three times for scientific works and textbook. Chernozemova Elena Nikolaevna, Doctor of Philology, Professor of Pedagogical State University, Moscow, Russia, with her report Ideas of Cosmic in the Traditional School Internal Program of Educational Programs. Hello, dear colleagues. Uh, I am here from Astrakhan. Um, so, Blavatsky has been there. And even before her early marriage, she lived here in our Astrakhan. Her, actually, her grandfather father was the member of uh, the council of our city. Our, uh, my uh, speech today is not uh, related to our, our behavior, no, but it's about education. I think it's very important to touch upon it. I think it's important to start not early, but at the proper time to start talking with a growing mind about the most important uh, categories as honor, value, uh, dignity, universe, space. Uh, I can repeat that in English uh, in order to make sure. So it's proud. Uh, virtue, dignity, universe, space. It's important to make sure that growing minds uh, take uh, a good uh, overlook of that. Maybe many teachers will be actually appalled by the idea that these uh, concepts can be explained to students and uh, pupils in schools. But I think it is very important to understand the possibilities to talk about these important aspects in our education. I cannot believe that uh, German pupils do not study Goethe or that Italian pupils do not study Dante or English pupils uh, do not study important aspects of the English literature. When we talk about such important authors, uh, we have a lot of material in order to talk about them. I am teaching in university, actually, and uh, I teach uh, history and literature, literature in Middle Ages, and uh, uh, I teach for fresh year students. In Russia, pupils graduate from school at 70 years, and we have 70 years old entering universities, and they meet uh, with, uh, they try to familiarize with uh, 
works of Dante, for example. Um, when we talk about Dante, I always uh, talk about uh, the uh, what is written uh, in the entrance to the hell, and uh, it is actually uh, explained uh, by it explains the unity of the cosmos. Actually, uh, it's uh, the creator, the God who who built hell. And it was done in order for justice to reign in the world. It is explained as the fullness of power of uh, the Father, God, as the fullness and completed of uh, knowledge of uh, uh, God the Son. And uh, it is also added by Prima Amora. This is three beginnings that form the three unities of our cosmos. And other philosophers actually say that uh, a human is created in the likeness of God. And these uh, three beginnings actually manifest themselves in our curiosity to know everything that is around us, to understand the, uh, the world, to be able to act, not to be manipulated. We want to know. We do not want to be ignorant. And we want to love and be loved. It's quite natural for every human being to do that. If a human being is created in the likeness of God, they have to be harmonized in themselves, to harmonize these three strivings. If one striving is dominant, then it can be a tragedy or it can be something hilarious. For my students, I actually try to show them uh, an example of Romeo and Julietta. They wanted to laugh, but they didn't understand what they wanted. And it ended up devoted in a tragedy. Or if something is dominant, it can be the other way around, something comical or hilarious. We can also discuss uh, words of some important Russian philologists or philosophers. For example, Mikhail Bakhtin, who called it the memory of genre. Actually, uh, for a writer, it's not important to understand that they are doing something according to a creator's uh, uh, idea of that. Many writers are born in Christian culture, culture. so they add uh, some Christian vision of the world to their works. We have spiritual genres um, in uh, many of uh, Russia of our books like prayers or many other aspects. We, for example, when we study when we study prayers, we consider them not from the point of view of church, but from from secular point of view, and we discover in it uh, so many interesting structures and ideas. We consider a prayer as uh, something, a signal sent from a clear point of view on earth, the location. Uh, you can always say where you want when you pray, but it goes to an endless cosmic space and it includes within it the whole universe. It connects the whole universe to a certain, certain location on earth. And actually, the time is also concentrated in prayer. You can always find this moment, the moment when you make your prayer, but you make it for a limitless time. 
So a certain point of view in historical time is connected with eternity. This small genre of prayer connects endless world with something limited. It connects uh, the endless time with your time on Earth. So we can call it the extension of your consciousness. Sometimes we do not call it in such a way in Blavatsky uh, works. We do not uh, explain that like that, but we are working on that in order to make uh, these uh, ideas understandable and comprehensible. Speaking about prayer, I consider it as a genre of uh, spiritual work. And then when we talk with students, I pay attention to structure of uh, the prayer. It starts from an address to God. It's a very important stage. When you call God by the name, you attribute yourself to a certain culture. A person who makes prayer names with whom they talk. And then a prayer uh, supposes the structure of the prayer calls uh, the God as uh, all-knowing, all-hearing, omnipresent. When a person names these adjectives, they allow themselves to be managed by higher powers. They acknowledge the power of higher, uh, of higher powers just by naming these words. And then the structure moves on to gratitude. If it's a, a prayer of gratification, then it ends with gratification. If it's uh, some demand or claim, then it goes on after these three st uh, stages, after gratitude. You don't have to address it to God. You can address it to the whole world, to universe. So your demand might be the fourth stage, and it includes some idea within itself. It's important for your self-discipline and self-growth. At this stage, a person asks themselves, if I am, uh, if it's possible for me to ask that from God, I usually ask my students, what can you not demand from God? And they try to understand by themselves what they do not allow to ask. So uh, they do not, they are not allowed to ask something that is not stated in commands. So, and in commandments. If uh, a commandment is violated, then a person kills something of, out of human being within themselves. And uh, that violates uh, the law, according to them, a person is protected by the universe. So even without reference to works by Blavatsky, I still return to them. They are appearing in many of my discussions, even without direct reference. Similar important and uh, quite rich options are actually appeared by when we talk about Milton's uh, lost paradise. It's a very important uh, work and uh, it actually very it's very uh, related to what Blavatska says. So it's important to talk with a person through their consciousness. All teachers say that you have to be comprehensible and understandable when you talk to your students and adapt what you say to their consciousness. If we violate that principle, we can break something within a human being, or maybe something will not appear clear to them. I quite frequently draw students' attentions to a very 
important uh, important idea, uh, important parable from Bible. Uh, according to that uh, parable, there was a person who was uh, sowing uh, some seeds. Some of these seeds were on the road. Some of the seeds uh, fell into fruitful ground and uh, uh, they bear fruits. So it was uh, a very well-known parable. And uh, it is well known. And I ask uh, my students uh, what this parable is about. Obviously, it's not about agriculture. Uh, what do you hear in that? And uh, step by step, we understand that actually an idea, a well-known idea is wrapped in, might be uh, wrapped in secrecy, but it, it should be, it should fall into a good soil. Without that, it will not give us fruits. Without that, it would not grow, it would not bear fruits. So the similar is true with consciousness. When uh, you give some ideas to students, it should, these ideas should fall in proper soil. I like to see the eyes of my students when I say that. They, uh, it seems that as if they waited for me to say something similar. Unfortunately, in our schools, we do not discuss these higher questions so often. And uh, the worst thing is that in our schools, uh, students are not asked what do they think. Rather, we ask them what the writers intended in these works. But we do not ask them what, we do not ask our students what you feel, what you want. Uh, and I think that it's crucial to ask them that questions. I will not uh, take more of your time. If you are interested, we can continue our discussion. Thank you so much for your presence here. Thank you for invitation and uh, good luck to our forum in general. But in the end, let me just uh, say that uh, in the morning I was not able to present here. Uh, I wasn't able, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for these ideas of cosmism integrated in uh, education, which should not only be in the educational concept, but they should form a basis of its content and didactics, which reveal the patterns of assimilation of knowledge and formation of beliefs. Uh, and it determines the scope and structure of the content of education. Of course, this is one of the future prospects of development of education. And if uh, in your, you know, without this knowledge, it's not possible. So I have an, an interesting idea. When you mentioned uh, prayer, when you uh, talk with your students about that, the idea is as follows. In the beginning of evolution of humanity, uh, in the first cycles of this evolution, which you have to know in order to understand the concepts of God, will, and prayer. If we do not know cycles, we cannot determine these uh, concepts. Without these abstracts uh, cannot fall into consciousness. You have to provide that for the consciousness to grow at the same time. This is law stated by Blavatskaya. These laws uh, have to be known. Without them, we cannot um, grow. These laws are constant. They work in cosmos and in human as well. In the beginning of evolution of humanity, in the first races, humans developed at the time and they uh, sung hymns. And uh, in the full phrase of uh, human consciousness evolution, 
humans started to ask for prosperity for all. It was many years later, they started asking for themselves when physical form appeared. When you call God by name, it's physical form. And this God is not, it doesn't exist because they ha doesn't have form. God is internal state of higher mind. Yes, it's locks of uh, secret do doctrine. Without that, you will not be able to be in evolutionary flow, and you will not be able to give this knowledge to students. Have only one commentary. H.P. Blavatsk mentions cycles, time, quality of time, and these qualities of time are related to psychology of ages. Everything is told right because it's how in Kalachakra or Mahayana system this teaching. And according to each cycle, age, age, a human being has an ability to perceive uh, or to manifest his or her potentiality for understanding and uh, for um, realizing a subject. Actually, that is what H.P. Blavatsky said. She stated the greatest law of human consciousness development, starting from birth and finishing by uh, his leaving of uh, the solid world. Thank you.